G'day folks, um, playing around with a bit of Festool today. Had it for a while, unfortunately, sorry Festool. <laughs> but we had to put it through its paces in particular, this bad boy. Um, Duano's got the five inch standard grinder, I'm gonna call it. Yep. Um, I've got the five inch concrete cutter, and then we've got the CTM MIDI I. Yep, which is an M class unit. M class oh. unit. All right, first up, we're gonna talk about this uh, AGC 18. Yep. Angle grinder. Uh, so this is actually Festool's first ever, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, first ever regular grinder. They've been in the concrete cutting game for a while yep. and, and grinding and such, but um, for cutting steel, this is the first unit. I don't think they even have an electric one, certainly not in Australia anyway, mm. um, and this is their first cordless one. So, um, you know, typically we think of Festool more as a woodworking company or a concrete kind of um, yeah, you you know, specialist you company. Your tracks your capex. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You're, you're not going to expect to find wrenches and rotary hammer drills and stuff yep. booming out of their line. It's yep. not really their, their scene. So it is nice to see, because a grinder is a very, very important common tool that yep. just about every tradesman yep. wants. Yep. It's, it's nice to see that for their users. Um, this unit here is um, a nice grinder. It's nice. 8,500 RPM. Oh, so there, right? thereabouts for speed. Yeah, yeah. I used it as stack, and it's a super comfortable grinder. Yeah, it's it's very smooth. Yep. The handle's a little bit fatter than uh, their competitors, especially for my delicate little hands. Yeah, mine aren't much bigger, so it's, it's a little bit on the fatter side. Yep. Had this been in our grinder comparison a couple of years ago or eighteen months ago or something, it wouldn't have won for power. And it wouldn't have been too far behind either. Nah, I agree. We tried it against a couple of others. Yep. Um, and it's it's got some serious grunt. It's not to be sneezed at. No. It, it looks smooth and it looks pretty. Yep. Um, it's got some grunt. It does. It's a really good cutter. Yep. Um, I've got a flap, up, flap disc on it right now. Um, it wasn't as good with a flap disc and kind of heavy grinder, load. heavy load. It kind yep. of, um, you know, it, it's going to give up a little bit quicker than some others. Yep. As a cutter, really nice and very fast yep yep now you didn't like the button just the position of it and the way it sort of went it's got a oh just your, your spindle lock it's a bit funky it wasn't my favorite but it does the job it does didn't worry me i didn't notice it yeah but it's a small thing to think of um now one thing you also notice on there well you might not be able to see it that has the bluetooth battery on it which we're going to oh, talk yeah. about a bit more when we go here yeah that's one of their latest batteries and the bluetooth in the battery is sensational yeah also um i never use variable speed on a cordless grinder but it has variable speed yep you know one up to six for cutting i wouldn't have thought you would but with a flap disc if you got an 80 or a you know a, a softer flappy maybe you drop it back a little bit perhaps don't know um and then uh, I was going to say something else about it. Oh yeah, the um, it's got the quick lock flange. Yep. The yep. fold up little handle. Little flange. handle flips up, yeah. Which, when they first come out, a lot of people are like, ah, it's going to get damaged. I haven't seen a single one of those damaged yet. No. Happy to be wrong. Yeah. Contact us, but I haven't seen a single one of those yeah. with the handle up. Um, it's a touch on the stiff side, but the actual guard rotating lever here yep. is as good as any I've ever seen. Yep. Yeah, and probably in fact, hasn't been moved a lot because it's always set for me. Yeah, for in, cutting. In fact, I haven't really used this much because, as I say, you kind of set it and forget it. Yep. But that's as good as any I've ever used. You can tell that's there for good. It's not going to break. Yeah. Um, that's Some really, are clunky and a bit of pus. Yeah, I'm um, going to call this a high quality unit. May not blow the world away for power in terms of being the best and greatest ever. Yep. But certainly high quality. Yeah. And the price on this was uh, four ninety nine for a skin. Oh, so it's on the high side. We'll talk further about the system, uh, but yep, you you put the cart before the horse. But that's a if you're on Festool and you're staying on Festool, then no dramas. But that's a hard pinch at four ninety nine for a Australian skin. for a grinder skin. It's a bit rough. Festool users and lovers are used to having to part. You know, sell away their children for some products. Um, but uh, <laughs> sell their children. Well, maybe not the children. Maybe a dog. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Tell it's, us about it's that. It's on the high end. Okay, so across to here, this is the diamond cutter DC DSC AGC eighteen. It's the diamond cutting concrete cutter. Yep. Um, this thing basically is that we didn't pull motors apart to see if there's any difference. Right. But with a huge shroud on it, an impeccable dust shroud. Now, they promise 95% of dust will get sucked away by this. When you combine this unit and this system with 
this vac, yeah. it is incredible. It, it, you can't see any We've dust. got some cam- comparison footage, and people, there, there's no trickery. Um, some dust extraction systems are complete pus. Yep. This thing, you actually drop it in, and as you're walking forward with that cutter, through paver, concrete, whatever you want, there is next to nothing. Still recommend that you wear a mask if you're cutting concrete stones, all that sort of stuff, because the whole silicosis thing, this promises 95%. With an M class, it promises 99.8 or 9%. Wow. But still use it. The reason I say that is because humans are involved, and as you're walking along, if you happen to sort of wobble it or lift it, you'll get small fluffs of dust because of human error. Right. And and interestingly, when it comes to concrete cutting, yep. I don't know, maybe I'm just an idiot, but I usually try and pull concrete cutters. Yep. Like when I've got a diamond disc on my regular grinder, I should say. It's a, it feels like that's more a natural action. You can definitely go straighter when you pull blades as opposed to pushing them. Yep. That's my experience anyway. But that's not how this is designed to work at all. The dust extraction goes to hell yep. if you pull the unit. It must be pushed. Yeah. And when you do push it, it is mint. Which is why I call sort of, I sort of say walk it forward. You know, yep. you need to be confident with it and walk it forward. Right. Um, what I'd also say when we're talking about dust extraction and all the rest of it, this, this is an M class. In class means that you've got a cleaning feature. Yep. Um, you can do concrete and silicosis type stuff with it. What I will say, if you're going to clean it properly, what you need to do is pull the hose off, put your hand over the end of the hose, and then flick that lever three times. And okay. you'll hear a clunk three times. Oh, okay. Now, if you do it, if you're using this and you've got someone cutting and someone else is sitting there going clack, 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 it doesn't clean it properly, but also as you hit that, it bypasses the air to flick it through the filter so that you'll get a full for dust every time you do that. So just be careful. I found that out inadvertently because I'm a pinhead. When I was on site with Beth Builds, we used a Festool concrete grinder. Right. And then we used uh, my five inch sander. Yeah. Uh, six inch sander. Five inch, six inch. Six. Let's go with six. <laughs> and then as we were flicking this to try and clean it, I was getting full of dust. Because I'm an idiot on the side, it actually shows it in color and in picture form. You gotta put your hand over. The only thing I'll say with that is that stuff and annoying. Well, if I gotta pull the hose off, put my hand over it, and flick it the three times, then put the hose back on. But that's what it is. That's why your auto cleans, which I often get aggravated at auto cleans, because it's you hear a continual sort of thumping, not continual, yeah. but it intermittently kicks in and it auto cleans. Yeah. But you'll also get small fluffs of dust when that auto cleans because it it intermittently halts the full suction through to this. Ah, okay. So just be careful when you're doing concrete cutting and grinding, cement sheet, pavers, all that. Yeah. You will get a small amount of dust release. I don't know how that works with full legalities on the union side. Right. For me, I just want, well, I'm going to have the mask on. That's okay. Yeah. I'd rather that than be carking it in a few years because I was an idiot with this. Yeah, fair enough. What I'm going to say is the concrete cutter is stinking cool. I did some paving work and I've never done paving before. Yep. And I ended up having a pretty sexy gig yep. um, and got it done nice. And it was down to this because you got a nice base to actually run on. That's 650 as a skin. Now, okay. I balk a bit at that at 499 yep. This yep. 650 if you're playing around and doing that regularly... I've got no issues with that at 650. Which is interesting, isn't it? Because, I mean, the headgear, the dust extraction side of things, you can see, oh, it's an extra 150 bucks. That makes about sense, doesn't it? Yeah, So it yeah. probably does. So maybe it's just twisting your head yeah, who to knows? suit what you need. But it is a nice, you know, I had a go at that as well. Yep. Um, I was cutting like a uh, like a paver, you put your hot water service on. Yep. Big, thick concrete thing. So, full, so it was too deep yep. to be able to cut through with that. Yes. And as long as you let just push it and, and let it kind of cut, yep. don't try and ram it home. Yeah. It's got power for that. It's not, you shouldn't be doing concrete slabs with this. That's not what this is for. No. Don't, you're not doing expansion joints with this unit. It's for small, smaller stuff. Yeah. Yep. I Paper, agree. Pavers, tiles, that sort of thing. Yep. Yep. Or if you're plumbing, you need to get through a slab um, if it's going to be right to, to at least mark it out nice and neat. Right. Cut neat to drop it out to get to an access point. I don't know. Okay. Speaking out of field a little bit there. Sure. Okay. Jump onto the M class. Couple of things. This is about the nine hundred and fifty dollar mark. Yep. Now, before you balk at, oh, it's only a vacuum and it's nine hundred and fifty bucks. This is possibly the best vacuum that I've used. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple of points that I'd like to change on it, but what I would say is, as far as a compact unit that holds my lead, holds the best hose I think on any dust extractor around. No question. Stinking awesome. They call it a hose garage. I just call it that hole in the lid sucker that holds everything. 
actually gets me excited because this goes in the back of my ute. No yeah. questions asked, with no crap hanging around. I'm actually not surprised at the price of that or, or worried about it. M class vacs aren't cheap. No. Um, and this is a premium unit, so actually, uh, to be honest, I actually find the value of this to be higher than, say, over here on the grinder. Yeah, okay. Um, that unit, as you said, that hose is spectacular. It just, I mean, obviously you're not going to spend a thousand dollars to get a hose, but you do cream your pants a little bit over that hose when you first start using it. Yep. And also the power lead. It is just a thing of beauty. Yeah. There's something about the lead and the hose that takes it to a different level. The hose is one of the most frustrating things on vacs and extractors in general. Yep. And then the lead is often too short or it's a really tight plasticky cheap thing yeah so there's there's got to be some money in that yeah um 15 liter so you would say that it fills up fairly quick if you're doing a lot of sawdust that sort of stuff and the bag would fill up yeah that's just part of the cost i yeah. think it was 70 ish bucks for a, a pack of five bags okay. which hurts a bit at the time but then if you're doing some concrete stuff i don't want that crap in the air or in my lungs no. so there it is and so be it so just on the bag one thing is when it's sawdust and all the rest of it, I can fill this bag, no dramas. But if you have a look here, I've only got probably a third, maybe a half, but this is concrete dust. So the concrete dust, I think, seems to clog the bag up a little and the alarm constantly goes off because it can't breathe and fill anywhere near as much if it's the sawdust one. So concrete dust, you will do a few more bags. There's your filter there, quick and easy for you to get that out. I've tapped it out a few times. At some point, I'll actually put a new filter in it. Um, on the front here, um, we've actually got a manual button to flick it on, um, so an actual physical button. Then you've got the ability to press a little, it's M-A-N, manual button to press it on and have it going. Or yes. when you pair the Bluetooth battery to this, yep. some Bluetooth stuff is clunky. Mm. This is not clunky whatsoever. No, this this Bluetooth system is really, really idiot proof. Yep. Mike, you know, gave me all this stuff. Said have a play. Yep. I put it in. Didn't have to read a manual. It was obvious how it worked. I had it so sorted in thirty seconds. Yep. And it's really, really lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And don't go past the fact what I just said. The Bluetooth is in the battery. Mm, that's it's cool. not in this tool, it's not in that tool, it's that's... not in the saw, oh. it's mm. in the stinking battery. I think that's phenomenal. That's clever, isn't it? If you have a Festool tool that it doesn't seem to work with, like my saw, the HSC55, I think it is. Oh, the track saw, yeah. The track saw, um, contact Festool, they'll work it out with you, and there's a module that they need to change in that. Oh, okay. There's a period where that won't work seamlessly right. with that. Um, so, but... The cool thing is, I'll say, is that Festool Australia are owned by a family. Yeah. So they're actually contactable. Yeah. That you can deal with them. They, they've got some nouse about them. Yeah. So Festool Bluetooth in the battery, I think, is is a absolute beast of a thing. Yeah. Um, this thing is cool. 15 litres. Now, having used it a fair bit, I wouldn't mind the next size up as far as literage. Which is 36. 36, I think it is. Yeah. It might be a 25 in there, but I'd, okay. I'd go the CTM 36. Interesting, CTM36 M-Class mm -hmm. has same suction and it has the same um, air literage volume. Yep. Just a bigger case, yep. um, a bigger storage. One thing I'd like to change, when we've got this physical manual button here to turn power on yep. to get power to the unit, the little manual button that you have to press, when you're working around and about, if you haven't got your Bluetooth battery, because I've got a couple of those non-Bluetooths, yep. it's actually a fiddly, fiddly little touch button. Mm. Um, to actually get it going. You're right, it's a bit... It just bugs me. It's, it's a small thing, but it's yeah. a touch button. Mm. I'd rather it be a, a second manual button on it. Um, you can actually turn the vac up or down. and have, I always have it full noise all the time, Yeah, well, as I, usual. The touch buttons are fine for the plus and minus, yep. um, for the, the the just the volume of air that it's moving, Yep. Uh, the power. But yeah, I agree. The manual button would be nice if that yeah. was uh, also mechanical. Yep. So this thing changed the game for me for a couple of jobs that I had and actually made me look a hell of a lot better than what I was mm -hmm. with the concrete cutting. Yep. This I take everywhere in my ute now. Yep. Um, the grinder was a really cool thing. One year warranty on Festool 3 if you jump online. So if you've bought this and you don't jump online and extend the registration, you're a nut job. Indeed. Um, extend it and you get your three years. Um, I don't know what it's called, but the Festool system where things connect together. Yep. Uh, the boxes and everything. Yep. I really like how you can throw it. Yeah. Okay. Sistema or something? Sist uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, sustainer. Sustainer boxes. Sustainer, yep. 
sit right on top of this and connect. And it's, I've actually, I've seen you using it on Instagram and stuff. Yep. It's actually really nice that you can chuck your boxes on top of the, yep. and wheel them around with your back. Yes. Um, yep. All in one. It is cool. And it looks sexy when I store it over the back there with everything <laughs> stacked up. Um, I don't know if I've got much more. Please, if you have any questions, hit us up. We know this is a reasonable ticket item, dollar-wise. Yeah. But I'm telling you now, it is dead set phenomenal. Um, yeah. I really like this and I love this system. Yeah. That's really cool. Hit us up for any questions or comments or if you've got one, let us know what you think. Yes. Um, outside of that, hit us up on Instagram, guys. I'm always on there. I'm like a teenager. Um, <laughs> hit us up and let's have a chat. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers. See you next See ya. Bye.